Hey, how y'all doing? So the channel's just started the the video right now. So right now what I'm doing is logging in to my YouTube on my computer so that way we can see how many people are on here. But also too, I'm gonna turn off the comments on the, the screen itself so that way like I said, because otherwise they'll be coming up through there and you know, I don't know. Um, when I talk to people I like to see their eyes, not, you know, the, you know, a whole bunch of commentary and, and training and stuff like that. So um, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarkuche. I'm here with the guys of Causeway Pier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What up, baby? <laughs> so, um, the deal was, you know, normally on Thursdays, I like to do my storytelling Thursday, which I also expanded to um, getting with the tackle shops that I do business with. So that way, um, they can share more of behind the scenes of what's going on in their shop. Maybe they got a sale going on. Maybe they great fishing tactics, whatever it may be. For example, like Causeway, it's got their own fishing pier. It's not just a regular tackle shop. They got their own pier. I do have to say I'm quite, quite jelly of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you a, know it's a hard life, no pun intended, you know, but uh, we get to... Uh, <laughs> We get to do a lot of product testing, I guess you could say, you know, firsthand. A lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm the, and you get to walk out back. Like, just, I'll be back. I'm going to lunch, you know, and go out and go fishing, dude. Like, I mean. Yep, yep, yep. That's not uncommon. That's that, not uncommon around here. Yeah, no, I know. But it's just like, for me, that I'm not even five, ten miles away from y'all. It's so hard for me to sit there. You know what? I got to go product testing today. And then it's like four days later, I'm like, damn it, I haven't gone yet. Like, damn it. <laughs> and it, it really just dawned on me right there of how how tough that is for us over here, being further inland and stuff like that. So, um, all right, I've got Edgar, Miguel, Brandon. Let's see, hold on real quick to clear out this deal. Uh, there you go. Uh, Sean, CJ. Yeah. All right, guys. So rub, these man. are the guys from Causeway Pier. Hey. Yeah, we got the brisket. Yep. We got. Wait, no, you're the brisket. I'm, I'm the, the rub. Yeah, rub. I'm yeah. the flavor. You know. Yeah. Got the brisket and the rub. Yeah, that's right. Damn yeah, man. Yeah. No. Um. When are y'all gonna cook out again? Because I remember y'all were doing that for a while, a few years ago. You know, uh, going out to the pier, go get some grub, and. So I made some steaks the other day that were steaks and mushrooms and they were they were fire out of this world mm -hmm. good they were yeah. pretty good yeah putting a putting a cast iron on a outdoor grill you know i know it's kind of killing two birds with the same stone but uh like you still yeah. get that smoky you get, you get it hot butter nice. garlic yeah. little rosemary and mushrooms then you, and then if you want some tar on it just throw it in the fire i i, I had i had to open that door because i'm so hungry right now and I said I was going to go get me something, but I got to driving over here and just went straight to the shop, opened it up, sat down. I was like, damn, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. You right by Buffalo Wild Wings. If we were over there, man, I'd be I, mango habanero all day. I, I've tried that one. It, it's pretty good. It just... I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Bubba's 33 right there, too. I, I am, too. Yeah, they, they got pizza. They got burgers. They got wings. They got shrimp. They got shrimp. My uh, <laughs> my go to is the chicken avocado grilled sandwich. It's it's fire. Their lasagna is pretty bad too. That that well. Oh. Mm. But anyways, <laughs> real quick. So with the weather being what she is, I mean, <laughs> unpredictable. Nasty. She's nasty <laughs> right now. No, I, I'm still like real because I, I went to make a delivery to Causeway Pier a little while ago, dropping off weights and tackle for them to be up on the game with everything. And if they don't have it, you make sure to say something because sometimes, hey, we, we get a little sidetracked with everything we got going on and may not know. So especially if you ever see one of my cabinets, hooks or whatever empty, you say, hey, man, you're out of hard life. That way they fucking drop a call. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Drop the F bomb. <laughs> right? Beep. So, um, but how how are you predicting today's weather gonna roll out? Because I, I you know, we were talking about it a little earlier, but you know. So I think I, I, I so I know right around three o'clock the wind's gonna change out of the north. 
I say from probably noon until three, four o'clock, the drum fishing is going to kick in. It's going to be fire. As long as the current doesn't get too bad. The, the crazy thing with drum fishing this time of the year is you want a strong south wind, but you don't want it too strong. Because so, you know, you, you want like 20 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. The problem is if you get too much over that, then there's too much grass gets kicked up. And I mean, I've seen days where you can't get a heavy gauge eight ounce spider weight to stick. And uh, then it just turns into chaos real quick. And I mean, it's hard to catch fish. Um, I remember there was one day where I managed to pull a fish on a day like that. The pier completely had cleared out. And what I was doing is I was walking to the corner, casting out, and then I would walk all the way back to the fillet table so that my line was on that much of an angle and angled into the current to prevent the grass from sweeping me out and try to get my weight to stick. And I did catch one that day, but like you couldn't do that on a day where there's actually people on the pier. So um, as long as it doesn't get too crazy, which I don't think it's going to, the drum fishing should be pretty good. Now tomorrow, it'll kind of be the same thing, except the wind's going to be out of the north. The fishing should be all right. I do prefer a south wind this time of the year. Um, December and beginning of January, I, I like a north wind. I like a good, strong, cold front. But January, end of January, February, and March, I prefer a south wind when I'm fishing for black drum. Um, that's just on the pier. I mean, and if you're not into black drum, this time of the year, you can tear up some nice size sand trout. And sand trout... That's about the writing. I feel like don't get the appreciation that they deserve. You know, if you're trying, to, if you're trying to eat something, fish to eat, whiting and sand trout go super hard, especially if you're gonna fry it. I yeah. Mean, if you're frying it, you're not gonna really tell the difference in any other fish. Super white flaky meat, and uh, and I mean, if you're a fan of ceviche like I am, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. Than Sand trout and whiting for the beach. And there's plenty of them out there. There ain't no oh, man. Them. There ain't no limit. And you catch them dang here every time you go. Yeah. No, uh, actually, I did that the other day. Um, dr like, Mother Nature's been kind of weird on, on our fishing this year. You know, normally we have the cold front start rolling through, and they kind of stick through to keep the weather cold and everything else. But it's been heating up and getting cold, heating up and getting cold. So on those cold days... We've been knocking off the fish when it's more than three or four days in a row, but then it heats right back up, and when then you know they're they're kind of on standby and stuff. So, on one of those cold nights, I caught a nice twenty-eight, you know, it's about a twenty-nine inch black drum, but then I didn't catch nothing else. So as you're talking about going with the sand trout and whiting, one night I started, I was like, you know what, screw it. If I can't get any drum or reds, I'm gonna take me some sand trout, and I started catching some good fifteen inches. 17 inches and then I, I loaded up my my stringer with it which was perfect because while i was out there you know having this frame of thought you know more than likely you know a couple of cousins or sister and brother-in-laws will come over and and come eat with us and sure enough i got the phone call hey how much fish are you bringing i said why who's coming and they're like oh so and so this so like I'm, I'm already on it and so i already had like eight or nine on the stringer and stuff and a few of the guys that were out there they're like hey you're keeping Sandra? i'm like yeah and they're like here you go and, and then the nice ones too and i was like I ain't, I ain't done that in, I have to admit, probably 10 years, at least a decade of feeding my fish sand trout because we've kind of been spoiled, you know, drum, red, shark, kingfish, you know, everything else, flounder, and, you know, and then I wouldn't, like you said, you know, they're re completely underrated for what they can cook, man, everybody's just, and, you know, I was like, man, watch your fingers, watch your fingers. So. And people don't have a problem giving away sand trout for some reason. No, like, yeah. they just don't no, know, but, no. Like, oh, you yeah. want this? Yeah, 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 yeah I do. Yeah, yeah. and you said on something a little bit ago, uh, you were saying how, you know, you get, this time of year especially, you get days where you have a good stretch of good weather, and then it gets nasty and cold, and then we get another three or four days of good weather. Um, I think that's a good example of, like, you got to be ready to, you know, if you come try to catch a big black drum this time of year on a clear bluebird sky day, clean, calm water. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough just because it's wintertime, just because it's, uh, you know, the drum runs going on. That doesn't mean that's the best day to, you know, to catch them and, and to do that. So I think just being a little versatile and kind of seeing uh, tomorrow's going to be, you know, calm, clear, real light wind. It's been 
calm winds past two, three days, uh, you know, that's not something to target trout or, uh, you know, flounder, whatever else is out there. But you might still catch a black drum, of course, because they're around. But I think that just all kind of falls into the – I always tell everybody, like, if you want to be the most successful fisherman that you can, especially here, you know, I mean, let's say you live in North Texas and you want to be a bass fisherman. Well, that's fine. You buy one set of rod and reels. You buy one type of, you know – lures for the summertime and lures for the wintertime and that's all you need if you want to be the most successful that you can be you're, you cannot put all your eggs in one basket you know if you buy all heavy action heavy rig or you know i mean if you're a shark fisherman, I mean, you buy nothing but shark fishing gear like yeah you can shark fish year round but it's not going to be the most productive thing you could do there's going to be a lot of other things you know that you can do and this time of the year I mean, speckled trout fishing could be some of the best that it'll be all year in the bays, you know, just throwing live shrimp under a popping court. So that's what I tell people, like, when it's nasty weather, you know, I switch to a little bit heavier gear this time of the year. And, uh, you know, folks on trying to catch black drum, you know, big oversized black drum, those days in between the fronts or, you know, the south winds when it calms down and it's bluebird skies, I either A, if the surf will lay down, I'll go to the surf, throw fish bites and dead shrimp in the surf and catch drum and whiting and redfish and everything else. Or I take live shrimp under a popping cork and I go fish the bays. That's just, you cannot focus on one thing and people get lost in that a lot. You know, people will catch it. Uh, people will catch a uh, speckled trout, a 25 inch speckled trout on a croaker in July. And back in December, to catch a 25 speckle or 25 inch speckled trout on croaker in December, and it's not you know realistic. There aren't croaker in December, you know, and that's not what the trout are eating in December. You know, same thing. Yeah. I mean, you're a huge shark fisherman. You know, I mean, Jack Ravel dominate. You know, Jack Ravel or, or Count on Stingrays. But I mean, if you want to catch a sandbar, your best bet's a sheep's head or you know something fresh, something smaller and fresh. You know, it's just. It depends on the time of the year and tactics and everything else. Just don't yeah, don't nope, nope. get caught up on one avenue of approach. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we were talking about a little while ago on the pier when that strong north wind was blowing. You know, everybody's so used to fishing within the channel over here that the other day it was like that. And all the other guys, when they started showing up, we started fishing the right side. Like, nothing but long rods over there. And everybody's coming in like, you've never seen it. <laughs> Yeah. You never see that. And I said, yeah. I said, but um, I saw that's where I ended up pulling one of the, one of the only drum that I know got caught that night was way off to the right hand side. And, but the only reason I was able to fish that angle is because that strong north wind was blowing so I could cast and create a bow, you know, to get it to land over here, but not catch that, 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 uh, the boat docks that y'all have there and stuff like that. But when it landed, it was perfect. Like I was pretty in line with that and stuff like that. But if it would have been the south wind, I would have never been able to fish that because then the bow would have been on the opposite side. So I'd have to throw further left and stuff like that. So willing to adapt and overcome while you're fishing, what type of baits you're using. And even then too, you go from large bait to small baits to still catch those monster fish as the season gets later and later. So yeah, that's people don't believe a lot that. of people don't expect people, that. I'm, I'm throwing a little bit of bait. Big, people swear big fish only eat big baits. Like no, that. that you know, I like eating popcorn every now and then. You know, I don't have to have a giant burger. I can eat popcorn here and there. The same thing, same thing with fish. And it, it, it trips me out. It trips me out. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and we hear it so much selling live shrimp, you know, and people come in and they'll be like, but well, you got good sized shrimp? And I'm like, yeah, but what's your version of good sized shrimp? Because I've got people that come in here and they want jumbo shrimp. And I've got people that come in here and they want tiny shrimp and i've got people coming here and want medium shrimps you know so i mean and people don't believe me they're like no 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 everybody wants this size i'm like no just because that's your opinion because yep. maybe it'll work you know yeah if i'm targeting bull reds or i'm targeting black drums or maybe i'm going offshore yeah i like using big giant shrimp you know and it's actually a really good bait for snapper for bull reds for black drums but if i'm going after sheep's head on the jetties i like tiny shrimp because sheep had to have tiny mouth. If I'm going after trout, then I like small to medium-sized shrimp. But it just, 
not it's not always one thing works best, you know. And yeah. in the summertime, you'll see it when we get the mixture of the white shrimp and the brown shrimp. The brown shrimp a lot of times will be the small ones mixed in your bucket, and you can throw those big white shrimp one right after the other underneath the cork, and the only thing that's hitting them is pin perch, and they're pulling the legs off of them. And then all of a sudden, you put one of those small brown shrimp on there. And you pop the cork two times, you can get your arm broke off by a redfish or a trout. And, you know, that's just what they prefer at that time of the day. You know what I mean? It's funny you say the, the brown and white shrimp. I was out on the pier, and I was I was looking at the shrimp. I was like, oh, I got, a, I got a good mixture of brown shrimp in here over the white shrimp. And my buddy's like, what's the difference? Aren't, you know, and he was thinking, you know, there was a size. And I was like, no, they're actually brown and white shrimp. And I pulled both back together and I showed him. Couldn't really show the camera angle because it was kind of drizzling on us and stuff like that. And so I explained to him, you know, the differences in them is only color. You know, I, I don't know anything scientific, the names or anything, but when they're dead, one looks brown, one looks white. And, and you, I mean, and it's night and day kind of deal. But you're right. There's, there's times when I prefer strictly using nothing but brown shrimp because that's all they're hitting on. The bigger fish will hit on that. And like you said, the perch will hit on the, the white shrimp. And and I was telling him, and, and he noticed because I was catching like two or three drum to his one because he was using the white shrimp. And I was like, well, here's some leftover because I already had got my limits for me and my daughter. So I left my shrimp there. And he's like, oh, I'm only going to give it a, a while longer. And I ended up leaving. But it showed because of the numbers of catches on mine were a little quicker. And granted, I had more rods out there, too, because... Me and my daughter, so we had three apiece. But still, I mean, if we're if you look at the, the numbers of all that, it should only be like one to one per person if they were hitting on both. But if you see one that's hitting a lot more, you'll pay attention to that. And that's where adapting and overcoming, like really pay attention to the type of bait you're using, you're purchasing, you know, because there's a lot of times you'll get those real itty bitty ones. And yes, there's times when, hey man, that's perfect for my hook, and I'll throw that little bitty one out there because. They're targeting smaller baits, but you got to pay, you got to pay attention and you got to remember these things because if not, if you're stuck on that one, that one way of thinking, it's like you saying, you know what? Every day we're only going to eat steak. It don't happen. Neat. Not even for me. I, oh, I don't think anybody definitely. else can say they eat. Yeah. Now shrimp, if I have shrimp, I will find a way to eat it every day if I can afford to. <laughs> I could do yeah. that. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on pizza. I'll put it in spaghetti. I'll put it on my steak. You know, oh, I'll fry it up. I'll bet you. You know what I mean? There's so many ways to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I just can't afford it. I can't afford it. Shrimp, 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 shrimp. On. <laughs> I need to oh, deep fry bro. everybody. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Yeah. 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 yeah that, okay. dude, that just excites me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know, it's a shame. So I was the same way. In fact, I love shrimp so much from the time I was probably six years old. Instead of a birthday cake every year, I would ask for one of those cocktail rings oh, of sweet. shrimp. Oh, man. I and that was, like, that was my birthday cake. And my mom would have to buy two, one for, like, everybody, and then one was just mine. Well, I started working at Causeway back in uh, 2012, I guess. And... Uh, I mean, I used to eat the shrimp raw, bro. Like, I would pull them out of the tank, pop the heads off of them, peel them, eat them. I would take a little cup of salt water, drop three or four shrimp, pop it in the microwave for, like, 30 seconds. They would come out just beautiful, boiled red, eat them like that. And, uh, but I don't know if it was overexposure to shrimp or what. But every time I would get poked, man, my hand would start itching and swell up. And then one time I ate shrimp, dude, and I was, like, 25, 26 years old. And uh, my throat swelled up, couldn't breathe. And after that, that's it. I'm done. I've got a shellfish allergy. You know, and I asked my doctor and he said, yeah, at any point in your life, you can develop an allergy to anything. And yeah. uh, it was like, I guess your body just developed a shellfish allergy. So it, it, it breaks my heart because I can't eat, you know, crawfish, shrimp, crab, lobster, any of that. But yeah. I, it, so I, I, tell, I don't know. know what I would do. God, I would. I don't know what I would do if that ever happened to me. Like, oh, shrimp, crab, like, I, I, I could eat it. I could eat. If, I, if, I could eat shrimp every day at one hundred percent. It's like, but like you said, there's so many ways, so much, so much stuff you can do with it. Oh yeah, yeah. And so now, uh, give a little insight to how y'all 
our width up here and stuff like that. I know um, things have been changing over the year because uh, over the years, it's been a long time because Cause has been the owner for a very long time. And I know now y- y'all are working the dynamic differently and stuff like that. I've never really gotten into, you know, talking with y'all and stuff like that. But I do want people to know that when they go over there, they can talk to y'all because a lot of times, like I was explaining, you know, a lot of people see my channel and they own, you know, they stick with the knowledge I have. But at the same time, I always tell them, hey, man, talk to the guys at the pier because they know what's going on right this second. Who's out there? Who's catching? Who's not? You know, and a lot of times, oh, I didn't I didn't talk to my. Well, that's your fault, bro. Like, you know, they try to ask me, well, what's the what are they hitting on today? I'm like. I don't know. I'm not out there fishing. You know, I haven't, I haven't, I, I, I do. I take the buffet out there and I start picking and choosing what I put out there. So. so <clears throat> I think a lot of that comes from you. Do, you do a great job of doing videos. So, you know, and, and they're very informative and you can see how you do it. Now, what people don't understand is you do put a lot of hours into that. So. You know, they see a video, they see you catch a fish, boom, right away. But what they don't understand also is that you're, you kind of understand, like, hey, it's going to be a good day to fish. You know, not every day, and that kind of goes back to what we said at the beginning, not every day is going to be a great day to fish for drum. You know, if it's bluebird skies and, and calm winds and clear water, like you have, been, <clears throat> it's a great day to fish, just not a great day to fish for black drum. Um, but yeah, so people watch your videos, they see what you do and, you know, they'll probably go out there, try exactly what you did. They may not get the results and they're like, well, what am I doing wrong? You know, and I mean, like you said, come in here and talk to us, any of us, the night shift, they know what they're doing, the day shift. And here's the crazy thing is, and I, I tell people this a lot, you could ask 30 different successful fishermen how to fish in Corpus, and you're going to get 30 different answers, which isn't a bad thing, you know. It's, I mean, it's just building your uh, your knowledge bank and your arsenal on how to do stuff and try different things. I mean, I can tell you, when I first jetties, I got humbled quick, you know, because I was killing it in the bay. I was killing it on artificials. I was killing it in the surf, and then I went out to the jetties, and I was like, and I, I specifically remember I was trying to catch sheep's head. And I was out there, and I couldn't catch a sheep's head to save my life. And I was like, what in the world? And everybody around me was catching sheep's head. And I'm not saying I'm the best fisherman in the world, but, I mean, I've, I've fished a lot of places in the world. I'm, I'm a pretty successful fisherman. I, said, I'm, I, I got so frustrated, I just wanted to leave. But instead, what I did is I just put my rods down. I said, well, obviously, I'm not doing something right. And I just watched for a little bit. I watched what everybody around me was doing. And I tell people that a lot, too. Like, if you see one person that is super successful around you, watch what they're doing. Watch what their setup is. Watch what bait they're using. I'm not saying go right up and rub shoulders with them, you know. But just kind of watch what they're doing. And then you can replicate that. And, uh, I mean, that's... A lot of people, a lot of people just need to chill out and relax. And I'll be honest, men are the worst about it, you know, I mean, and talk. But 100%, I've taught a lot of people to fish. I've fished with a lot of people. I would much rather teach a, a woman to fish or a lady to fish because they, they don't, they're not super prideful. They'll listen, you know, and they do it. Man, you tell them how to do something, you show them how to do something, they'll do it for one second, and then they're like, no, I know better. I, I'm going to do it this way. And you're like, okay, whatever. Hard headed. <laughs> the, main, the main thing to do is just listen, talk, pay attention, watch, you know, look around you, and uh, and you'll see, uh, you'll see better results that way for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt on that. You know, it's, it's like I was asking for directions. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like to exactly. Do it. We're just hard headed, you know, we're just hard headed beings, but at the end of the day it bites us in the butt more often than it helps us. Yeah, no joke on that. That Paul, you got you got any advice for these guys? Um, I think what you were saying earlier as far as uh like tenor and stuff, you know, 
we show up on the videos all the time. Uh, we're always here. We, you know, we're here in the morning shifts. But the guys we work with, everyone's been here. Man, how, what's the youngest? Uh, probably three, four years is uh, the least time, the least amount of time that our full time employees have been here. So, coffee like, cake. Uh, oh, what is it? Coffee cake. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. No co is that coconut or cheese? Um. No, that coffee cake is like sugars, all kinds of sugars. And yeah, it's like different. Oh, oh, it looks like. Oh, yeah, it it's. Like Parmesan. I do that a lot on my channel. I tease everybody. It's coconut. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, anyways, if we're not here, uh, don't think that the guys you know working here don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing. They've been here. They've been fishing for a long time. They've been working here for man, fifteen years, ten. I'm. I've been here seven, eight years. Uh, he's been here longer. I mean, it's you know. This is what we do. We do this every day. Uh, we see trends. We pick up on uh, weather patterns, trends. We look to see when weather's coming and if it's right before it or fish after it. You know, a lot of people come in and say, hey, uh, on a day like today, where should I go fish? We're like, well, you know, wind blowing out of the southeast. It'd be in this area. It'd be a little bit protected from the wind. If you're taking a kayak or a boat, it'll be more calm. Um, you know, look for eddies. If you're fishing next to a channel by a barrier, uh, little things like that, I think, is uh, – little tips and tricks that, that we'd like to give out just from experience, really. Um, and even us, like, we feel with more people going fishing and coming back and telling us how they did and what they did and where they did it than, you know, than we do, really, because we're, we're here, we see a thousand people a day, and they all, a lot of them come back and tell us how they did, what they did, where they did, when they did it. You know, and that's just more stuff we keep in our heads. Like, well, I haven't fished, but yesterday I had... 12 people tell me they caught here at this area with this bait, uh, and this is what they caught. Uh, so, not only us have experience, but we have, you know, the experience from other fishermen like you and, and your buddies and your, your co-workers, Team Hard Life, coming out here saying, hey, we were, you know, we're still here, so we went to this other uh, channel and we tore them up. We caught a bunch of keepers, you know, just... Uh, not reporting just what's going on here because we just want people to be successful and catch fish, not just here fishing our piers is the only place you can catch. You know, just we want y'all to go out and fish because at the end of the day, you're going to come back, get bait from us or tackle or whatever. Or just, just uh, you know, tell us the experience, which we live by carousel through a lot. Y'all you know, come in and you're successful. We're like, hey, awesome. That was all right. You see that right Whoa. there. You see that right there. That that is fishing. true love for fishing. It, it don't always have to be us. So, man, you come no, back, no, you give us a sure. good fishing report, dude. Like, dude, you just cheered up our day like big time. Yeah, like, no, so. I get I get super pumped. Like, and 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 that's you know, and that's true love for the sport. And you know, after a certain point, I feel like with anything, like it, it, if you truly do love it, you know, I mean, I, I've caught so many black drum that. You know, I like catching it. I like seeing people that have never caught one catch one, you know. So I'll set the hook and hand my rod off. Here, bro, you know, you, you catch it. Or if I'm out there and I see a kid, I'm like, hey, come here, dude. But, yeah, I mean, giving a fishing report, like, hey, take sand flea fla flavored fish bites and some dead shrimp, go to the surf, the pompano are crazy. And then you yeah. get a message on Facebook or, or you get somebody to come by to fillet pompano and they're like, bro, y'all weren't kidding. You're like, man. That's awesome. You know? well, a little tip, and it was something I heard Tyler tell a customer. They were catching, uh, they went pompano fishing, didn't catch none, came back, and they were like, man, you know, I was fishing with the shrimp and fish bites, uh, and I couldn't catch anything. You know, I was fishing here, here, uh, and these other guys were fishing next to me, and they were catching. So Tyler was like, you know, uh, try peeling your shrimp, you know, before you throw it out. Uh, I was out there. Came back a while later, like, hey, peeling the shrimp work. I started catching pump. You know, uh, exact same thing, exact setup. Oh, the only difference was that peel the shrimp. Uh, and I thought, that, I thought that was her when we were like, yeah, man, cool. So now, you know, there's another tip in, in their bag, you know, that if something that's really peeling your shrimp and you made out there, it'll be more successful. Which is yeah. yeah, that's... Yeah, that you, you, you saw that real quick. We talked about fishing reports. All of us got all giddy and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. shoot, I'm all, I'm all about it. Like, and then there's times when I'm sitting here talking to customers... And they're asking us, like, you know what? I, I haven't found out myself. And that's why I'm always called. Uh, Causeway pretty much is the main pier that if I want a, like, up-to-date of something, I call them. And and, and they, you can ask these guys. Like, I call them 
couple of times a week just to say, hey, what's going on? How's the fishing? You know, or even, hey, what kind of bait they have and stuff like that. Even if I don't make it out there, it's just so I can have a kind of up to date of what's going on, what they've heard, what they've seen and stuff like that. So even if you're not going to make it out there, you know, you want to kind of keep in the loop of calling these guys and just, you know, getting in to that kind of deal. Because like you said, you know, planning a trip, sometimes you just got to be ready to fly out because the the weather's perfect it just cleared and i mean not weather perfect i mean i'm talking like right now i know me and uh tyler in the same boat of looking out the door and seeing how nasty it's getting and we're just like foaming at the mouth ready to get back out there (laughs) because i've I've, I've been showing my guys like you know it hold on let me see so right now we got overcast we got a southeast wind coming in and i've been showing them how i use those palm trees across the way to to let me know, okay, is it a good fishing day or a bad fishing day? There's also a flag right there. Yep, that's southeast wind. Like, that's how I get my fishing report from right here in my front door because I don't have a pier out back. But, you know. And, you know. Now that you got a new hip, you know, maybe your hip will start hurting on those days where, you know what? <laughs> hey, my no, don't be, that. Hammer, don't be telling me that. Don't be telling me that. going to be buying yep. No, no, no. It's not that type of hip. It's, uh instead of using metal and stuff like that they've come up with like harder um plastics and metals that don't really do that like i have a a right hip replacement already done this one's a lot older and yes occasionally when a bad northern's coming in i'll know two or three days in advance so in two three days in advance i'm going all right this friday i'm going fishing because it's going to be here because of this like i can already feel it and even with the pain i'm like i'm going like i'm gone i'm that old model (laughs) got you huh and then, like, right now with football season, it works out that it's, like, Super Bowl weekend. So, I got the whole pier to myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and everybody's – it's the little things, man. But, you know, for us, it's it's passing on the knowledge, hearing it. And then, you know, being able to say, hey, man, not not the same bait you hear is always going to be working the same day. I always have multiple things that I can put out there, test out, and see what they're hitting on. Or even where I'm fishing. Like, that one day, that, that – North wind was ripping over here. Everybody was fishing to the right. But even then, I went first, I went and cast it where you normally can't cast. Because like Tyler was saying, normally it's a predominant southeast wind. So you can't fish that area because of the way it's designed. But that doesn't mean the rest of the pier can't produce or the rest of the pier can't produce. But I was using the wind to my advantage to make it, you know, do the, the uh, Kentucky windage. I was able to aim over here and throw it and make it work out, and it did. I mean, I got the one drum. I ended up giving it away because, you know, for me, if I'm going to take fish home, yeah, okay, the sand trouts was a different story, but <laughs> but I'm not going to just take one fish, you know. I'm going to take multiple fish, so that way when I feed my family, I can feed my family instead of, you know, okay, I got I got one little piece, now let me save another little piece. No, no, no. I'm spoiled. I like to have it all fresh. Fillets and more sides than fish. I know about you too, bro. Thank you. What was that? Sorry. You you ever been to a fish fry and they have three fillets and they have more sides than fish? You know. That's a word. That's a word. That's a word. Hey, we caught some fish. We're gonna make some. Where the fish at? Oh, right there. (laughs) Okay. Well, let me get one little piece of fish. (laughs) Eight hush puppies. (laughs) Four pound of potato salad. I really wish I had more fish. My, my, my wife's like, she comes to like, well, I've been cooking there for years, obviously, you know, it's just, but when I'm, I'm doing my fish, like I'm doing fish. Like I, I, y'all, y'all seen in my videos, I have a big old four by eight foot table. I cover it with uh butcher paper, you know, five or six layers deep. And then I start stacking up the, 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 the uh, fried up fish all the way across. And then when I'm done, I'm like, I'm done. Like, and they're like, what sides? I'm like, Fish. <laughs> fish. What size? Yeah. Like, there's Protein fish. Like, you want yeah. sides? Y'all, y'all can handle that. Like, I'm, I'm not, I don't do the sides. I, I brought fish or I bring shrimp, like, they, you know, or shark, whatever it may be. Yeah. Y'all want sides? That's on y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man, making me hungry. Making me hungry. But, you know what? I, I got a little uh, story. When I first came to Corbett, I'm, I'm from El Paso, came out here for college and, you know, excited there was a bunch of water. Once we started going, you know, RIP Bob Hall Pier. Uh, we started going out there because we you know we heard it was successful. Um, there was moment of silence. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, there's always a group of guys, and it was you were one of them out there on the tee. You know, it was Albert, dude with the big beard. 
Uh, there was an older guy. I don't know. I think his name was Dave. Always out there, giant beard also. And just, a, a you know, your normal group of guys down at the T. And uh, the word was like, hey, those guys are kind of grumpy out there. Leave them alone. They're fishing for big sharks, whatever. Uh, and me and my cousin were out there, and we were just, you know, fishing, not catching nothing. And and one of one of you, was one of your uh, the guys you were fishing with, came over and he was like, hey, y'all catch anything? Like, nah. He was like, right here, you're fishing right on top of the sandbar. You know, kind of moved down a little bit so you can fish in the gut. And I was like, oh, what's the sandbar? Like, oh, yeah. So he, he showed me. Started just immediately being more successful. We got a few reds and whiting. Uh, but I was just a little tip like that. <clears throat> you know, and then I start, I go on Google Maps. I look. I'm like, oh, there's the sandbar. And he's like, yeah, they use them, you know, little highways. Most of the stuff are in the in the gut. Sometimes are on the bar, but most of the time fish in the gut. These light boats on the pier are kind of where they're at. So you can kind of, uh, you know, gauge your distance. And, uh, you know, changed, changed my life as far as fishing on Bob Hall Pier, you know, forever. After that little one tip, you know, I, it's really on the bar. Sometimes I throw lures sideways and bring them in, you know, when, when it's uh, clear people. But uh, that was just a cool experience that I thought, like, one tip. Uh, the guy was – I didn't even ask. He just kind of gave it to me because he didn't. He saw I wasn't really catching nothing. Uh, and made me more successful and, you know, just really be like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm going to stay here and catch fish. Like, no, let, let me do it with this locals. So, you know, said to do something even more successful, and you know, it's true. It actually worked. That that's a major thing you hit on right there. Is a lot of people will say, well, <clears throat> a lot of these tourists come down, and man, they don't know what the hell they're doing. I said, well, then you're failing. What do you mean I'm failing? I'm like, yeah, you're so failing as a fisherman. You're not sharing the knowledge to help them out. I said, because I tell you what, I'd rather fish with a whole bunch of newbies and show them everything they need to know. Because when I hook up. Or they hook up, then we all know what the game plan is. What we need to do to help each other out to land that fish. Whether it be right. you, 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 or you. You know, if you share, share the knowledge, you're just increasing your chances of being successful. For one, right. because when you hook up, you don't have to worry about them doing the wrong thing to cost you losing your fish. But also, too, for me, I don't always have to be the one catching. Like, I'm, I'm totally copacetic totally. with going out to a pier having some food, having some drinks or whatever, and watching people catch fish all day long. I'll, I'll be the net person all day and have a blast doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people, I, mean, I think it's pretty low. Totally like, missed that. Watching someone fail over and over and you know what they're doing wrong, but you just kind of keep it to yourself. Like, Hey, you know why? I guess some people, you know, it's their thing that they just want to be held a little higher for themselves, but man, you know, that's how everyone be. Cause it's a, it's a little, it's, it's for pleasure. It's not really, uh, some people do fish, you know, for, uh, for necessity, but in these areas, it's usually for fun and pleasure. And, you know, why not help somebody, you know, be a little happier? And I don't know. I, I don't get it, but yeah, I think it's a great thing. Just even if they don't ask, I've, I've tried to help someone not catching and they were like, I didn't ask for any help. No, no problem. Yeah. They, now, now there's, keep there's some people that don't want it. Keep doing it. Some hey. people don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. With and, that and, and, said, I promise, if y'all ever come in here and ask us for what we will not, everything we carry in this shop, we 100% believe in, in some way, shape, or form. Do I use it every time I go? No. But does it work? Yes. But, oh, and I'm sure you've had it too before. Like, somebody come into the shop, hey, man, uh, where do I need to go and how do I need to do it? And you get, you spend 15 minutes and it may be busy and like, and you're like, do this, 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 and this, and we're going to take this and go here. And then, and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, well, too much, too nah, too I'm going to take completely opposite of what you said, and I'm going to go do it. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, I, yeah. you know, and I mean, it, in some of your big box stores, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to say, but a lot of your big box stores, you know, I don't know if they completely are the most knowledgeable because most of the time with big box stores, they're just trying to hire, you know, more employees. And, but 90% of the time, any, and this is, this is nationwide. I mean, I have fished from Michigan to Alaska, to Georgia, Florida, Texas. I, I mean, I fished a lot of States and nationwide. Small tackle, bait shops, small, Outfitter shops, hunting shops, they're going to give you a straight out answer. You know, I mean, they're not going to try to sell you blitzing lamb and, you know, try to speak. 
Well, yeah, no, you nailed it. Nailed it big time there because I've actually been, you know, sales in Academy and or in Walmart. It's happened multiple times because people have recognized me from my YouTube channel, being subscribers there. And a few of them actually work there. They're like, hey, man, um, you mind helping this dude out now? So what's going on? He's like, he's talking fishing. And he, dude, you're here. I'd rather, you know, I was already sending with your channel and you came around the corner. It's just you know, things work for a reason. I'm like, sure, you know, and, and I help them out. But yes, a lot of these guys, you know, or these big box places, you know, I don't fault the worker for wanting to have a job at all. No, I fault the business for not taking time to show these guys how to, how this, how that, or like knowledge of what they're working with. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's one of the things, like I know with y'all's shop and stuff like that, the guys have been there for a long time. Like they've got, decades of knowledge built up there because they've seen it they do it i mean y'all have y'all's own employee challenge of fishing and stuff like that i mean i see it all the time y'all are doing that so y'all encouraging y'all's workers to excel in their knowledge to learn more and for us you know my guys it's a little harder for me because i don't have a peer right there where i could just take them out back and start showing them but getting them out and going fishing is the only way i will ever upgrade them to that status of being able to come and talk to my customers yeah, they come through the shop, but they start getting asked, hey, uh, you need to talk to them. Like, they, they know to just put it on us, you know, because, like I said, we're the ones making the calls to t shops like Causeway. We're the ones making the calls to other customers or other subscribers that are, hey, man, we're down the beach. This is what we're hitting on, this and that. You know, sharing that knowledge, guys, when you're out there fishing is priceless. It, it really is. It helps us continue to be able to help y'all. You know, all these shops, like you said, the... The uh, mom and pop shops, these smaller, not so crazy, huge, huge shops will sit there and take the time to answer your questions. But don't be don't be surprised when we start asking questions back because we got to know a game plan for you. We're not just going to say, oh, you got to buy this $5,000 run reel combo. Yeah. I just yeah. want to go for perch. <laughs> well, and, and we, we, we get that a lot. We go, you know, we have people come in, hey, what do I need to fish? And I'll be like, all right, well, I'm going to ask you a question back. Where are you fishing and what do you want to catch? You know, and, and, then, and then we'll go from there. And they're like, well, I don't know. I just want to catch something, you know. Okay, well, then that's simple. I'm going to hook you up with some dead shrimp and maybe some fish bites and little bottom rig and just fish on the bottom, you know. But if you tell me, hey, I, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I really want to catch a speckled trout. Okay. That, you know, perfect. Let's go over here and we're going to do this and live shrimp under a cork and, you know, or a redfish or you know, I get people all the time come in from out of town, especially in the summertime. Hey, I want to catch a shark. Okay. How tall and tall are you? And what size? Are you going to be okay with a, you know, 18, 24 inch shark? Oh yeah. I just want to catch a shark. Perfect. Let's take some squid or some cup bait, you know, and go out to the beach and, you know, here's this and, and you'll catch all the little bonnet heads and sharp nose you want to catch most of the time you know and so you gotta have especially if you're new you gotta have maybe an idea of what you want to do and if you don't have an idea <clears throat> then just be open to whatever that small shop tells you you know i mean i've i've went to northern michigan before planning on fly fishing with a certain type of fly because of what i read online or whatever and then I get up there, and when I get there, you know, I talk to the local fly shops, and they're like, eh, you know, that was good two weeks ago, but it's kind of switched to this now, which is totally, you know, I'm not what I'm prepared for, not what I was expecting, but I trust what they say, you know, and I, I, I end up changing it up a little bit, and it worked out. And that's what we always tell people, even in the summertime when, you know, because summertime here is a little bit more consistent versus the time, you know. We get four or five months of the same type of fishing. But uh, I always tell everybody, have a plan A, B, and C, you know. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you you're get probably, the you're northern, you gotta leave San Antonio and you're planning on loading up on live shrimp and going and fishing the flats for you know reds and trout, but you get down here and for some reason there ain't no live shrimp. None of the bait stands have live shrimp. You know, what are you gonna do now? We get yelled at, cussed at. Uh, burnouts in the parking lot, buckets thrown because we don't have live shrimp. And I'm like, man, you're like you're preaching to the choir. Like if I could have live shrimp every day, I'd be driving a Bugatti in the parking lot, you know? 
But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, trust me, we want it more than you do. But, you know, and, and you'll hear people say, well, you ain't got no live shrimp. We can't fish. We're yeah. going home. They go home. And, I mean, they will load up. A eighty thousand dollar boat and a hundred thousand dollar truck, and they don't have live shrimp, so they go home. And I'm like, man, like I've got croaker, I've got mullet, I've got dead shrimp, I've got gulp and everything else. I've got ten different avenues that I could just tell you, like, hey, this will work. Try this. But because we didn't have that one thing, that that plan A that you had, and you didn't have a B, a C, or a D. Now you're going to drive all the way back to San Antonio, probably talking crap about the guys on the causeway because we didn't have no live shrimp. But that, That's been one of, you nailed it right there big time because we get that call. We don't carry live shrimp. We don't carry live shrimp because we're too far away from the water to be a successful bait shop with that. And, then, and what I mean by that is when our customers would leave here with their shrimp, not knowing how to properly like store them, transport them, so they don't die on them, they would end up being a bunch of very expensive dead shrimp. So I tell them right up this place, I said, but we will teach you other ways to go out there and catch fish without using live bait. I said, but if you're specifically looking, you know, and I, I'll say, okay, these bait shops may have it, and then I'll throw out the names that I do business with in this direction or in this direction, you know, depending on where they're going to go. But also at the same time, too, I also preemptive strike by telling them, hey, man, I doubt any shop's going to have it because we've had 30 to 40, 50 mile per hour winds for like the last week. No boat, no shrimp boat has even been able to get out. So you got to really look at other alternatives if you want to try to do that. I said, now, by all means, you can go over there and waste gas and go ask them or call them and tell them. Or you can just, you know, buy something else in the meantime until you can find that live bait. I said, because... You know, it happens. It really does. There's live shrimp is one of the most pro proliferic fish or bait fish, uh, bait that everybody always goes because, oh, it's live shrimp, live shrimp. Live. He nailed it. There's so many other ways to go out there and catch fish, even if live shrimp is not present, guys. It, it, you know, it's not because they don't want it there. Trust me. They want I want it. Like, I want live shrimp. I just, I know it's not going to be conducive to a good sale for my customer. I mean, I want to make a crap load of money if I can keep it in-house. These guys are the same way. I mean, every tackle shop, if they could keep shrimp on standby like that, shh, it'd be a whole different, I mean, these, these shops would be, yeah, they'd be rocking it. But, and I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there's no way, there's no way to do it. Because in the wintertime, typically the winds are wild. You know, mm -hmm. then there's times of the year where the shrimp just ain't there. Like they're not there. The, 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 it's fishing, you know. It's do you catch a fish every single time you go fishing? No, you know. And so sometimes the shrimp just aren't there. And then you get in the summertime, and we just can't keep enough shrimp. We can have we can have three shrimpers bring us their limit, their maximum limit of what right they can there. catch. We can get in six hundred pounds of live shrimp on a Saturday. And by Sunday, when we open, we're sold out. You know, I mean, there's no way for us to just. So, I mean, there's going to be times of the year, no matter what, no matter what case. I mean, the only way that you could. I mean, there's, there's no way. You'd have there's to. No way. There's no way. Because I know, I know strippers that have eight boats, nine boats, and they still can't, you know, it, it, that's the all the time. That's a major thing right there, and it has nothing to do with the shrimp boats, the boat shops, or anything like that. There's limits on each of these boats of how much bait they can bring in per day. They are capped off, and they are capped off because, obviously, Texas Parks and Wildlife are trying to ensure that our fisheries ain't fished out. you got to remember that. Just because it's a great bait, that doesn't mean it, it still needs time to grow, to repopulate, to, to do what it's got to do. And with shrimp, since there's no minimum or maximum size, everything comes in. There's nothing returned ever unless they go over their weight, you know, for for the, the, the boat. Like like you said, I think it's 200 pounds per boat or something like that. That's per day if they can make it out. So they're all dependent on weather and 
whether it's the main killer of yes or no. If it's yeah. too bad, they can't go. If it's too, you know, and even then, it could be perfect time, perfect this, and they just ain't there. So that that shrimp boat will sit there and waste a whole day or do a couple of drags. And say, hey, they ain't there. And then they'll, they'll pack it up and they'll go home because they cannot sit there and keep paying for gas to have nothing to produce for it. So, no, they're, they're, for the guy who did just fish live shrimp, you may have that one product that that's the only way you like to fish. Cool deal, cool beans, more power to you. But don't punish these guys for not being able to have it produced when you decided to show up a day or two later after a big haul came in, knowing the front was pushing through, knowing the shrimp boats weren't going to go out. Pay attention to the weather. I mean, obviously, you don't go on a kayak without looking at the weather. You don't go on a boat without looking at the weather. Oh, you I mean, you're the way fishing without looking at the weather. I mean, it's, that is a smart thing to do. If you're going to plan a trip, look at the weather, what's going to happen in the next few days. Don't call a month in advance saying, hey, I need, you know, 20 dozen shrimp or 20 quarts of shrimp on this day because it may not even be there for weeks in advance and they, they've got nothing to say on it. You know what I mean? So it, 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 it you know can what? get there and I've that's, seen it firsthand. You know what I mean? So that's a great point. Like having sometime in the summer, we got two weeks of beautiful weather. Our guys are catching shrimp every day. We're having consistently. And then just one day, they're gone. They're gone. One day they're gone. Not them. Yep. Not one. Not one shepherd didn't catch anything. Yeah. And I mean, you can go. They and they go from catching their limit to nothing. Yeah. yeah. One day and yeah. That's the craziest thing. But it's real. And it's uh, I, I don't know if people don't believe us or or they think we're just we like to watch them cry before they leave. <laughs> but you know, it's it's. Yeah, we got a hundred pounds of shrimp in the back or something like that. Yeah. yeah come on, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any for the guys. You don't have any for, for that's no. another yeah. thing no we don't that's another thing that if you're watching this right now we do not we treat every single person the same we don't reserve bait for guides we don't do any of that we used to back in the day and it's you a know, mess it's a mess everybody is a guide you know and everybody everybody wants a discount everybody, everybody. wants a discount so hey that's we, my cousin my cousin's the guy he said you could say something for me yep so we kind of got rid of that a while back so i mean when we say that we are out of live shrimp or anything or anything we are out like out out like there's been times where i've had croakers set aside you know eight dozen nine dozen ten dozen because i might want to fish the next couple days you know go catch some trout to surf but hey if we sell out a croaker i'm gonna sell those ones that i had set aside for me too like we're gonna be out we're gonna be out out you know and uh it just is what it is. But you'll have people like, I mean, they interrogate you. You know, hey, I'm sorry, we're out of live shrimp, just sold out. You mean to tell me you ain't got <laughs> none in the back? You're not, not any. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh I forgot the about back. the back. Yeah, I'm back. sorry. <laughs> I forgot about those ones in the back. You're right. My bad. Yeah, I got 10 quarters <laughs> back there. How many do you need? <laughs> yeah, no, that. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that's 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 pretty crazy. I mean, and for us, like with shark bait, it'd be the same thing. You know? and I'll be up straight up and I'll tell them, hey, man, as hard as it's been, I can't even sell a jack. I said, because at the same time, I've got some shark tournaments coming up and it took me six months to get these three jacks. I said, I'd love to sell them, bro. But at the same day, you're, I know you're fishing the same tournament I am. Like I've got to, I've, I'm going to do the best I can because I also, I've got to fish that tournament. I can't show up with no bait, like, you know, but Shark baits it, you know, it, it, stuff. It's stuff to keep it goes both fish. ways. Yeah. It goes both ways. And even like we either have freezers full or we don't have enough bonitas, stingrays, you know, jacks, just like you said, it's, it's, it's the uh, polar opposites. One or, one or the other. And it's not like we can just go catch. You know, six hundred pounds of two or three pound bonita. <laughs> it's just, it's just not like that. I mean, everybody knows how good Florida fisheries are, and we get a lot of frozen bait out of Florida. You know, but even there, even as good as Florida fisheries are, you know, we'll call one day and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, we got you know ten thousand pounds of Jack Cavell. How many you want?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, well send me three thousand pounds." You know, and I'll have seven freezers full of jacks, and then all of a sudden. You know, I start running low and I call them back. I'm like, hey, I need another order. Oh, we're out and we can't find no more. Yeah. 
you know, and they'll go the rest of the year and they can't find them. You know, I mean, it's just, it's fishing. You know, I mean, the bait industry is almost like mining gold or something. Like when you strike it, you know, it's there and you'll sell it. And everything's great. But when it's not there, you know, it's not there. Oh, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 We yes, only exactly. sold shrimp. shrimp, crab, we sea lions, mullet, whiting. You know, there's so many ways to catch fish, guys. Now, one of the things that we haven't talked out yet is about y'all's y'all show. Y'all have a show on Facebook, right? They all go live there. Yeah, we go live what? on uh, Mondays. Uh, we do, and it's just you know, it's we we have a lot of fun. Most of the time, we talk about how crappy the Dallas Cowboys are, which, I mean, I think we all know true. that. Which, uh, oh, that's a deep wound right now. That's a deep wound. Oh, <laughs> I had to slide that in. I had, I, I was waiting, waiting, you know, I, I didn't know when it was going to come, but, you know. <laughs> the best when, thing is they actually thought they had it. You know, that, that's just. He, he, he was practicing down in front of the mirror today, like. <laughs> which, time out, I will say, like, I've never been heartbroken for a Cowboys fan. I don't know where I failed my daughter, but my nine-year-old daughter is a Cowboys fan, and she watched the end of that game the other day, and that poor baby cried for 20 minutes after that game was over. She got out of the shower, she was still crying, and I was like, man, I've never felt sorry for a Cowboys fan before until now, you know, but uh, so Cowboys fans, you know, you can put that in your pocket. I did feel bad for one of y'all, but uh, <laughs> for a little bit. For a little, it was so funny, though, because my seven-year-old son, you know, my daughter started crying on the couch. I was like, it's all right, babe. Go take a shower. We got, you know, you got school in the morning. Go to bed. She walks off, and he, he looks at me and goes, I feel real bad for Layla, but I'm so happy the Cowboys lost. I was like, yeah, me too, but don't <laughs> tell her, you know. But, uh, yeah, so we do have a, a live feed we do on Mondays, and uh, we go live, and we talk about, you know, the, the weather. The, the surf and the waves, what baits are hot, what fishing's hot, you know. Sometimes we, we fish during it. Sometimes we drink whiskey during it. Sometimes we might smoke a cigar during it. You know, you never know. You never know what you're going to get. But, um, and we, and we try some weeks, you know, we might skip a week or two because, I mean, I've got a family, the business, Paul's got stuff. So it gets a little crazy, but we try to stay pretty, pretty consistent with it. Some weeks are the same. Some weeks are just the same. Like, why yeah. Do it week? Or we'll just type out, you know, watch last week. Because <laughs> it's weather the same, same picture being caught. We have about the same amount of bait, you know, live and dead situation. Uh, yeah. You know, so. So it's on, it's on Causeway's Facebook, correct? Yes. Causeway Bait and Tackle on Facebook. Cool, deal. Well, well, what? We've been doing it for. I don't know, probably three, four years. No, probably the videos, probably like five years, six years. The live well, probably for the last three years. For all my subscribers that are here, this is something I've been I've been hammering on them for a long time. Eventually, they'll create a YouTube channel. Eventually, because <laughs> yeah. on the phone we're on top and bottom, so I'm grabbing y'all like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah. It, Eventually they'll have it, and and it, it'll be awesome. I, I, either way, you know, like I said, I, I wanted them to come on the channel to, I could just show show support of the knowledge that is out there that is at your fingertips, guys. Literally, all you have to do is pick up your phone, and call them up and talk to them and see what they have. You know what I mean? A lot of times, like I said, I'm in, I'm in. You know, they'll they'll receive two or three calls from me throughout the day, checking on bait, seeing if anything's been reported. And I'll double check. Like I'll call back later that afternoon, see has anything else changed or whatever. They, you can ask them. I, I call a lot, and I do it because my customers, my subscribers, they come in. I'm not out there on the front lines. These guys are on the front lines. They are there day in, day out. And you know, even on their days off, they still have plenty of other workers that can answer your questions and stuff like that. And you know, but you got to do realize this too. They do have shift change. Sometimes, you know, you got to learn this. Maybe that might help, too, you know, letting them know what time shift changes are there or they all sporadic. Um, that way they can get an idea of when's the best time to call to get the most up to date report. You know, maybe the guys coming off at this shift at this hour is probably the best time to call rather than the new guys. Because sometimes, you know, they're I, like me and Jeff. I come in, I, I give them a little rundown of what I need done, this and that and that, and I take off. 
but I may forget this over here. You know, they may not share everything that went on of what they were catching, not catching or whatever, because maybe they had an emergency with, with their, their bait, keeping it alive, doing this influx of bait. So it may not have gotten shared guys. So, uh, I don't know if that's something y'all, well, y'all can share on like uh, times shift times when it would be a good time. Yeah. We get a lot of calls in the morning asking how fishing was last night. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a tough answer. The only answer we can give you is if somebody's walking off the pier or still fishing in the morning while we're in, you know, we ask them in real time. Um, so if you want to know, if you're kind of going fishing in the morning, uh, call before you go to bed at night. Say, hey, how's the fishing? What y'all got? Uh, how's the bait going to be in the morning? Just because it's, you know, we're not here. We're, we're asleep because we show up at 4.35 o'clock. Um, so it's hard to tell you how fishing was last night specifically. Yeah, true that, true that. Sage, so give and give and take a little bit, guys. You know, it, you, they do the best they can. At the end of the day, they do the best they can with what they got. Um, you know, and we all we all do. I mean, that's that's the best we can do. You know, with what we got available to us. So again, guys, I, I don't know how much longer y'all got, but I do thank you for being on with us for an hour, bro. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm so, I, you see, we keep looking this way because I'm looking at the time because, you know, I'm still looking at that window that Tyler was talking about. I was still thinking that same thing of getting out there for that time period to see, you know, even <laughs> yeah, if I no, don't come on, come on, come on, and we'll, we'll go live out here, man. Come on. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, they're, they're talking about y'all, y'all show on here. There's quite a few of the subscribers that, you know, watch y'all show at the same time. So that's awesome. Like I said, I mean, to bring in new people to, you know, because this video is always going to be up. It's always going to come back up. So, yeah. you know, for future reference, this is Causeway Pier, guys, right here. Uh, what's those phone number there? So if they don't know it, they can give you a call. 361-939-7513. The address is 11645 South Padre Island Drive. And the Facebook is Causeway Bait and Tackle on Facebook. There you go. All right, guys. Paul and Tyler, thank you very much for, for giving us some time, guys. Y'all have a very blessed day, and I'll see you on a bit. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you, brother. Later, guys. Later. <laughs> All right. So, all right, guys, that was pretty awesome. I did not get a chance to to look at a lot of the comments that was going on, but definitely look forward to uh, – uh, Getting out there and doing some fishing, but I think me and Jeff have to talk lunch first because I'm I'm hungry. <laughs> you didn't hear me at all. You all right? Yeah, I'm not sleeping. Mm. But, uh, I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, I figured we'd, we'd handle lunch before I take off to go over there and fish for a bit because right before the northern hinge is probably be the best window to get out there and get on some black drum. So yeah. maybe maybe we'll go out there and go live and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, but I don't understand. It's raining, but it's chilling as hell. Yeah, yeah. Because I heard the rain when I left before I left. So I was like, okay, let's go get the hoodie. I walked down there. <laughs> yeah. So what do you, what do you want to do for lunch? Uh-huh. I mean, we have we have burgers yesterday. I'm down for that. Uh, look, man, look, they're, they're Queen's got some damn good burgers, man. They're pretty juicy and stuff. So, uh, now as you want something else, mm. I would say Chinese food, but freaking, they, they don't open till eleven. By the time we get there, Um It's too early for pizza, too. Yeah, then we gotta wait an hour or two, though. Not if we go pick it up. Okay. You want to click again? I'm fine with that. Yep, yep. From DQ. And they're talking about fried jalapenos from DQ. Have you tried those? I don't know. They're saying fried jalapenos from DQ are amazing. I have never seen them have fried jalapenos. I was talking about the little strips that they make. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Are y'all talking about strips or are they like? Stuffed jalapenos. I don't know. 
But I know the ones that are good are from Wiener's Nest, so let's stop all the videos. Yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. here. Let's see. All right, guys. So we got Danny. We got Steve. With the uh, same Hicker. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about the same drink or you want different? Tea. Um. Yeah, I'll do tea. Thanks. Um, this is the one that I got. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, it's fried jalapeno strips on a burger. Oh, okay. Al Alitos or something like that is what he's saying. So, what's up, Drew? How you doing, guys? You know what? Let me see if Jacob is available because I was trying to call him this morning. Well, let me send him a link real quick, see if he's available. Uh, so, all right, so I sent Jacob a link, and the reason being is because I wanted to kind of talk to him a little bit about... I was like, why is he knocking? <laughs> I was like, why were you knocking? Bears. Yeah. Why? It's business. Huh? It's yep. kind of a, you know, how do you do with the, the floor, the water, and all that? Actually, I haven't checked it today. To tell you the truth, I don't think it's even had enough rain to even produce anything. So. It's, it's it, heavy rain. Yeah, it's the heavy rain days that we have to worry about. But, but I do appreciate you coming and check on that because that is... Something that has been in a thorn on our side there for a minute, so. What's going on, fellas? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Hold on. I'll be right back. I gotta. I gotta talk to him real quick. <laughs> What's going on, Greg? CJ. Henry. How's the welding going? What's going on, Edgar? I'll move this around so I can actually show and actually see what the hell I'm doing. What's going on, Jaime? Oh, I'll probably prick, prick my finger. That's, that's a given. Uh, how's everybody's day going so far? Hey, Drew. CJ. That's no fun. Yeah. 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 I'm actually getting some sewing done. <clears throat> so this is a That's what I'm showing right there. So, my that's a main one. I guess my worker is to hear him scream right now. What's going on, Ray? Jester. 
I guess it's a uh, morning for y'all still. Yes, it's a wallet, John, but uh, no. Yeah, you guys are getting wet down there, and we were getting snow last night. All right. Well, so I'm exactly. I was working on a wallet that is, I guess, for you. I guess uh, I wouldn't be working on it on here. Yeah. Yeah. Because now we got to get. Yeah. Do an overhaul or something. <laughs> All right, boss. You have a good one. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Dealing with false code, red, and water leaks. Yeah. Uh, what's the best now to wear there? Uh, I'm welding Tesla right now, but stop Tesla. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> that wallet. See. Sorry, I missed it. Is that a wallet there? Huh? Is that a wallet you're working on? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's a numbered wallet. Yeah, the cheeseburger. Oh, that's what we hadn't had in a while. Wiener Snitchel. Damn it. Hmm. Let's see if he's already in line. That that would be a good one. Let's see. Got about four or five inches, maybe. Dang, Chester got eight inches there. Let's see. Let's see. Let me call him real quick. Yeah, that would be a good one, too. We ain't had that in a minute. Uh, Oh, I know. I need to go fishing, hey, but... You already in mine? Oh, okay. You already ordered? Not enough okay. ice. Somebody said wiener such also. Ooh, that's a good one we ain't had in a while. <laughs> All right. Later. <laughs> Let's see. Damn it. Yeah, so I went out there earlier, like I said, to Causeway Pier and was talking to them about uh, doing the lives, and we were going to get them on Thursday. However... Uh, that's one of the days that Tyler has off from, from his week schedule and stuff like that. And it's real hard to get him back into the shop. I totally understand because, you know, as a business owner and stuff like that, trying to, you know, leave the home or whatever you already have plans for to come in for an hour or 15 minutes, you know, it's just, it's unfeasible. So that's why I went ahead and did that video today with that. But also too, guys, how are y'all liking the distance casting videos? Did y'all see that break off? That was crazy you didn't see it that was nuts yeah that freaking and actually it was in three pieces not two it broke off in three i don't know if y'all saw it or not on the slow-mo uh but i wanted when i zoomed in i wanted to show the the major break off of that stem coming out of it that was damn that was, that was intense for for sure so yeah that was nuts yeah, right. so uh, I do have to admit, a lot of the guys, you know, they were they were like, "Dude, when's it gonna go? When is it gonna go?" Because you know, you heard the first video where it cracked, and that was on one of the casts. Well, then yeah. later on, that happened. You know, it just it, it's amazing that you know it, it didn't really stab into his arm. I mean, he lucked out on that one too because it immediately formed a bruise. You saw yeah. that, uh, but yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty intense too. So. Yeah, Dan, he, uh, Daniel is the, the gentleman that was casting that rod. And, you know, that was some, he's got, you know, 700 foot casts, 800 foot casts. Like that dude put it out there. So yeah. um, I, I am looking forward to getting my reel. I'm going to send him my reel to have him clean it up, go and fix the bearings on it or improve the bearings. I'm actually going to go with ceramic bearings just to, increase my chances on getting that better casting because yes, I'm getting great, great footage for throwing an eight ounce weight, you know, and, and normally y'all see me do that on a regular throwing an eight ounce weight off a pier. And, and, you know, it, it's, I'm getting distance on there. And obviously 
more braid comes off the rail during the cast because of the wind and all of that that we're using. But once it lands, I've papered it, brought it over here to the line counter and seen where it all works out. So those guys, they were pretty, pretty blown away that I'm throwing that weight and getting that kind of distance. I'm looking forward to getting more distance, you know, with practice and practice. Because like I said, my hip was my biggest holdback. That was my... It felt like I had an ice pick in the pelvis. And every time you move the ice pick like that, that's what it felt like when I would walk. And it, it was it was brutal pain. So, but now. It was like oh, that before my knee surgery. The what? Said it was like that before my knee surgery. What, that much pain or that what mm -hmm. it felt like? Every time I took a step, it was like someone was stabbing me with a hot poker. So I was always wondering about that, and you're actually showing us how you're doing it. You're crossing over the needles like that, taking it up and going forward as you do it. So mm -hmm. they're getting stitched on both sides kind of deal. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody watches any other leather workers or whatever else. There's tons and thousands and probably millions of videos out there of people showing people how to sew leather. And you'll see a lot of them. They sew to them. I am like one of the very few that so away from them. Why? And why I is have that? No idea. <laughs> it's like casting, like certain ways we cast. We just develop our own little form. Now, I do have to ask you, I noticed on one side you got it tied to another piece of string tied to the needle, the one in your right hand. So why do you why do you have it tied like that? If you got a well, you're doing hollow core there, like hmm? why, why don't oh, you like tied. punch it into itself? Yeah, it's not tied. Yeah, all right. Um, basically, all I do is I'll run I'll run the thread through the through the eye. Uh huh. I'll pull it out, and then I'll take the needle. All right, and I'll come through it yeah. and run it out. Like I'll kind of like pinch it. Run yeah. it down and pull it through. So it's kind of, it's, um, I am kind of running in on it on itself, mm. but uh, I'm just, I'm coming right back out of it. Otherwise, okay. this stuff will, this stuff will just slick and slide right off the damn needle. Well, I mean, if you braided it on itself, it wouldn't because you're always keeping pressure on it. It's like inserting one finger and pulling on it. It's like our end, end loop. Mm hmm. Yeah, but, but I just notice kind of like having a. If I don't, if I don't have it where it's locked in on it like this, the way I've got it here, because I've I've tried yeah. it, doing it, just running it on itself. Yeah. For some reason, it won't lock. Well, you're probably only doing it a few, like an inch or so, too. That may be. Yeah, well, because I'm I don't have the the capacity. Oh shush. Ah. This freaking guy. See, on fishing line, when you're spooling up a reel, you've got yards. I only have inches. Ah. That's right, Daniel. Fire him. Fire him, Daniel. Ah. <laughs> I got the boss in my corner. And, and, and this is this is actually a good thing to, to test about because um, they always ask me how far back do I braid it in to make sure it holds. I always tell them about 12 inches on each side. But you're not trying to have 12 inches of braided line back in on itself. You know, so yeah. that may be why it happens like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it in just a few inches or like two inches and see how it holds. But that's a great, a great. Get it, Sock. Get it. Get it. Get it, Sock. Get it, Sock. Get it. I don't know what you're barking at, but get it. Hang on. Go get it. 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 Get it.
<laughs> All right, guys. So I'm, I'm kind of replicating what he's doing there by putting it on the hook, send it back in on itself. <laughs> All right, so I've got it back in, and I've only done it probably two inches, two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's working. I mean, it almost cut into my finger right there. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Right there? Yeah. Let me go a little shorter. <laughs> All right, I just I just see that you're 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 pulling on it hard. No, see that's the thing is I'm not it when I pull on it to to tighten down the the stitch. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no, 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 not not, not not to tighten down the stitch to get the needle through. You're kind of. Oh yeah, dear God, a little bit because of the size. I don't like yeah, really big yeah, holes. No, that's what I'm saying. And and I'm, I've got this hook, and what I'm doing is, let me see if I can get it here. Caitlin, did you get the trash out? All right. So, shit. You see, you see, I'm opening up the hook right there. You're married in real life. Hold on. Uh, do you have Do you have a splicing needle? Fire. Ah. Uh, yeah, somewhere in my gear. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm only, pulling it with that. My only problem is, is for one side of the wallet, this is all I have. I'm, I'm dealing with this is all the line I'm dealing with. Yeah. So. And I've got it the way I've been sewing for so many years is, is I've got it measured out to when I'm done. Here, let me grab a when I'm done. That's all the all the line I have left. Oh, that's more than enough there too. Yeah, but see, then I gotta take more line. To make it where I can feed it back on myself to make sure I, to ensure that I have enough at the end. Look right there. That's all I'm doing. This guy. I don't know. I'm just. I'm. I, I see a problem. I always want to help. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, no. It's, this, believe it or not, this right here, the way I, the way I figured out how to do it to make it stay on there, it doesn't yeah. slip off. So there's no. Mm. There's no slippage on it when the way I've got it. Beautiful. Cool. So I just I don't know, I've seen a knot like that. It just, it's the opposite of what I'm looking for. And I know yeah. it don't stay in the gear. I know I know all this. I just I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I did I was calling you this morning because I was gotten because I was sitting there and I was editing my videos and um like on your description and stuff like that, you you fill all of that stuff in on your videos. I think I forgot to do it on the last couple of ones. Okay. Well, that, that hurts you because, like, when people are typing stuff in, if the more info you don't have in that, that the long description and even yeah. the tags, it's harder for your videos to pop up. Good see, I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. That's, that's the way it works out. But let me show you something real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go to the YT studio because I see you got yours set up. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, so go to content, and I'm gonna go to my last video, and I'm gonna hit edit right there. And so right there, it gives me the chance to do my regular description and then, or the title and then the description. If you click on your description right there, it pulls up everything that you want to talk about your video the what describes it and stuff like that and then i also start putting in the tags of people 
or things they should know about leather work, braided line. Like um, I do shark fishing, sail lines, Padre Island National Seashore, Packery Channel, like all the things that may people may search on while they're trying to find my video and I put it in there. You know, and I also like obviously I've done collaboration videos. So I got jacked up leather works in there. I got Thai Pig Patrol. I got, you know, Catching Dinosaurs, uh, Team Real Locos, like just anything that might have some kind of way of pulling my name up. I want it in there. And you got 5,000 letters to choose from to put in there. I even put in my hashtags there. I put in my um, the businesses that I do business with, you know, sponsor names to putting their name yeah. out there and stuff like that. Because when they do do searches and they pull up, you know, hey, Big Fish Consulting, Hard Light Bait and Tackle is going to come up. Jacked Up Leatherworks is going to come up. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So that's just food for thought and what you can do. And, and I could, you know, do one video, like edit one, like all the way through of like everything you could possibly think of. You know, all those collaboration videos you do with all those other people, put their names in there too. Because when they search their name, you want them to search your name. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, okay. it's all it, it's all ways to to make your videos go more viral and stuff like that. Yeah. And even then, putting in viral video or most funniest video, just stuff that you know can can really just generate a lot of sales or a lot of views for your channel is all off that description right there. So that's why I was calling you this morning to to do that, but. It got a little worried when you didn't answer about the third time, which is rare. You always answer on the first one. <laughs> yeah, I had my damn do not disturb button on, so I didn't hear no ring whatsoever. Okay. Cool. Yeah, no. Um, for life, what I wanted to talk to him about was a little more than renting the vehicle from them. Uh, like we all know, you know, the beach cleanup is a huge thing with a lot of beach fishermen. This may be a way to uh, get their name out there with a lot of the people that don't even know they exist there on the island. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what better way is a bunch of fishermen that are caring about the island. So, um, yeah, no, let, let me talk to them first, like I said, because I'm not just talking about one vehicle. I was talking about their whole fleet. You know what I mean? They're, they're always needing saying? people to, yeah, yeah, just donate a day. And it's not even a whole day. It's, what, three or four hours? Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I was going to see if maybe they can do it that way. That's why I said, let me let me do the talking on that. Because right now, you know, they're, they're trying to get the most money they can because they've been through a real slow period. Yeah. Better than trying to help another vet, you know. Uh, this will be a great form of that ain't too expensive. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. if he may need some help with like gas money or whatever to to ensure, then I'm pretty sure we can help them out in that way or, you know, something like that with the channel. But I want to talk to them first. Uh, I was going to do it yesterday, but I did not get a chance to. Um, I'll probably actually call him right now as soon as Jeff gets back and I, I load up uh, my fishing gear because I am going to go fishing. <sighs> Lucky bastard. I didn't hear the crowd cheering or nothing over here, so I'm going to have to go and catch them. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, no, it was, just, it was just something that was crossing my mind last night when I was doing my editing on the videos and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I wonder if Jacob's doing that. And I didn't really get a chance to uh, go through your channel, but you did send me that. And I'm glad you're... You're able to see where your hours, your watch time hours is growing and stuff. Ooh, what do we have here? Yes, yes sir. You too. We got Toby. Toby sent us something. I think this is lined for his reel because he's also ordered a reel. Yeah. Now, let's, see. let's see. Yeah, right now I'm at 208 subscribers and nice. I just hit. I just hit 200 public watch hours. That's all right. All right. Getting there. Getting there. So, yep. Hi. Yep. He, he sent me the line, the braided line for his reel. We got him a reel or two, something like that. Yep.
cold deal. Yep, yeah, he leaving left me a note there. Probably wants them spooled up. So we got your braid in, Toby. You, it is good to go. Yeah, I should be getting a box from Craig about that size. <laughs> what was that? Said I should be getting a, a box about that size from uh, Craig any day now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. We got Edgar. We got Four Life. We got Ray. How y'all doing, guys? Yes, and, and keeping those shout-outs. MB in there. Um, uh. Let's see. Oh, hold on real quick. Where's the phone? Hard life made the tackle. Hello. Uh, busy, busy. What can I do for you? Uh, I want to do it so bad, but I'm not today. I'm not really in the mood for Google and they're having us do, increase our word search or something like that. So, <laughs> what's up, Voodoo Craig in the house? John Darnell, how you doing? Looking for someone that makes 1.25 ID gimbal. Ooh. That's going to be a tough one right there because I think one of the ones we found was like a 1.0 or something like that. Uh, and it has been a pain in the butt. It really has. Uh, one company said that they were having them made and uh, we can never get them in. So. What size? A 1.25? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, holy <laughs> No, but it was good, guys. Uh, sorry for the uh, for the distance casting. It really opened up a lot of people's eyes to how braid can work for distance casting and be able to not burn off. Hard is keeping it wet. As as I'm, um, you know, reeling it in and stuff like that, because most of the events they hold are normally a lot hot, hotter and stuff like that. So um, that was one of the things that they were really uh, paying attention to is how many breakouts I was going to have. But as y'all can tell on the video, I finally backlashed with a breakoff, which is great. It's great. I wanted. I, I was waiting for it to happen. I wasn't going to instigate it, but it, you know, I was waiting for it to happen. Because obviously we all backlash. We even I backlash. I backlash, and I do have breakoffs. You got it, boss. All good. Uh, however, it was a prime opportunity for me to show them how I'm going to save them money and how it's going to work out. So when I started doing that, which I ended the video right there, right when you see it's all dug in there. Uh, but I'm going to show, start the next video on showing how it all comes together and using the hollow floor braid, and it's a prime example right here. I'm surrounded by pretty much everybody that does not believe in this stuff. So that's going to be the hardest sell right there is to, you know, get into guys that don't, you know, it is not what they need or can work with. And yes, at the end of the day, it was a little harder to work with because I was spraying the line as I was reeling in, but I know I can develop a way to uh, make it happen to where I don't have to keep out there with a water bottle. I was thinking maybe I could get a wet rag, tied up to the eyelet and as the line's coming through it forces it onto that wet rag or you know maybe a sponge or something like that but it was my first time attempting it so it after all and all was said and done i considered a big huge success for that because um, i know with tight line braid they have a lot of things coming coming down the road and it can be some great things for the fishing community uh, and we're looking forward to it no ketchup? No, but you they had one job. No ketchup. Oh. Just dip it in hot sauce. <clears throat> yeah.
Damn it. Let's see. Oh, this thing is greasy. <laughs> oh. Look, look how greasy the paper was. Yeah. Greasy or juicy, one or two. It's still going to go down. About to go down. And it's going to come right out. Brian, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> oh, about two tank tops here. All right, Dad, you can eat them all, kind of deal. No, stop. <laughs> Already. Already getting fired. Is that, is that for Albert or was that for Jeff for not getting ketchup? No. Okay, he said that was for Jeff because he didn't get ketchup. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> da. Da, da. Liquid silicone to our brain. Um, well, the biggest question is Is that liquid silicone biodegradable? Oh, you're going in your pen. If it's not, I wouldn't want to add that to my line because I'm trying to design this so I can be fishing with it. Obviously, yeah. while I'm doing it in the field is one thing. Doing it out when I'm fishing is a whole different ball game. I don't have to worry about wetting the line every single time. Stop. Because once I got it down, it lands in the water, so it's going to pull back yeah. in more water. That was friendly. But while I'm out in the field... I don't want to taint the yard or the field that we're, you know, doing this in, you know? Scoot over. Scoot over. I don't know, did you get any of the Jalitos? No, did you? Yeah. They want to know how they're going. I haven't tried it yet. You haven't been in yet. No, Robert, we're doing that at 4.30, y'all's time. Right? Mm-hmm. Which will be right around the time that the, the northern is supposed to be blowing in. <clears throat> Unless it goes taped off crazy fishing. <laughs> hmm. Good Lord, I think I'm in a live freaking Carl's Jr. commercial. Hmm. Look at that guy, that's mm. yeah, Brandon, where are y'all at that the thunderstorm's coming in like that? Daniel? I'm going to have to look into that. And 
and see how that'll work on casting them on the high speed casting like that. Ooh, Edgar sent a picture. Let's see. Send it to you. Oh, it looks like he. Oh, nice. Single speed? <clears throat> looks like it, yeah. Hey, MC. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, hmm. I'll have to check it out, uh, Daniel, because I've, I've never tried that. And mm, I mean, if it works, that'll keep me from having to wet my line every single time, which might be a great thing for the distance casters, too, because then maybe they'll be more inclined to want to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll put it over here. Yeah, single speed. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know. Maybe I'll win one of these damn drawings that can get me an SX. Well, I did get notified that a guy has some orange reels. Ow. I'm waiting to find out some more information. As soon as I do, I'll let y'all know. Maybe we'll get him and do a drawing for those. You know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> but there's the last bite of the burger, guys. Last bite of the burger. Look how cheesy that is. Oh my! Something yeah. about processed cheese just doesn't yeah, look appealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Tell him fire, Daniel. <laughs> Do that? Yeah. Fire. Get it, <laughs> 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 Whatever. Oh, man. All right, guys. So, I'm done with lunch. I'm going to start loading up. I may see y'all in a bit. If I if it ain't too, too windy out there while I'm fishing, may go live. I'm about to say, you better hurry up and get your butt out there and go fishing. Yep, yep. Got to go, got to go, got to run. All right. Again, Jacked Up Leatherworks on the house. Make sure to be sharing his link to his YouTube channel, to all the social media networks you deal with, and screenshot it, and do the same for me. Because once we hit 25,000 subscribers, we got five prizes, six prizes right now to give away. I did con get contacted by another uh, channel sponsor. We have not confirmed what the gift is yet, but. Nice. It is coming. So, yeah. And it is windy on the island. So, time to go fishing. Later. Yeah. <laughs> Later.